risk of sounding like a bit of a walking stick waving old fuck. Where I grew up and when I grew up, there wasn't anything like this anywhere near where I grew up. I had to, to get to find out about new bands, I had to write off to mail order catalogues in Gainesville, Florida, who'd send me the, rent, the wrong record four months later. You guys are so fucking lucky to have Banquet Records here, putting on shows like this, putting on shows like with all the ones they do, and doing the record store and putting out records and all that kind of shit. So I think they deserve an enormous fucking round of applause for being fucking hard. You should support what they do. This is something about growing up with punk rock that's gone back in the day. Records in Kingston uh, was when I started out playing shows really and it just it's a great independent record store in the south end of London and um, John Tolly who runs it I met doing in stores down there for early I think really there's a like, I think we played at Kingston a banquet um, that was so bloody long ago it's hard to remember um, and certainly right from the very beginning of my solo career I was going down there and doing in stores um, and yeah and just I made friends with John very quickly because he's a lovely personable man and because he is driven by the right um, incentives. Do you know what I mean? Like I, I hugely respect who he is and what he does and how he's trying to go about it. Okay, so a long time ago I uh, left university, didn't really know what I was wanting to do, uh, got a part-time shop, part-time job at the shop Beggar's Banquet uh, for a, you know, a few months, see what's happening, give me some time to skate and watch some gigs uh, and I never left. So that was about 20 years ago. Um, uh, we've owned this place for 12 years. We took it off the people uh, just before we went uh, bust. But yeah, I was working at what was Beggar's Banquet and then I turned to Banquet Records 12 years ago. So I sort of fell into it really. Didn't, never made a conscious decision to run and own a record shop. Just wanted to have a fun job while I decided what I wanted to do with my life. And it turned out it's this. Maybe this is stuff up in the air. I like Kingston gigs because they're close to my house and you can have the biggest bands in like the smallest venues and everyone's there that you know from the local area that likes your bands. You can meet people there that know the bands as well, you make new friends and it's great. I think it's special about Banquet and John and what he's doing down there and, and indeed the whole team, of course it's not just John, um, is that they're, they're, they're proving a point which is that it is possible to build 
a local scene anywhere if you've got the right people working for the right motives. Um, I don't mean to be rude about Kingston, but I mean there is no particular reason why a touring American band would play, you know, Glasgow, Manchester, Birmingham, London, and Kingston, and yet people do that all the time. And the reason they do that is solely because Bank of Records. Say so, I will not go to the lights of. We use spaces which wouldn't traditionally be gig venues, but we turn them into gig venues. And that would include uh, Kingston College, The Bros, uh, and obviously the Hip Jam and McCluskey's, and even the space we're sitting in now, which was uh, a year ago a Korean restaurant, and is now a kind of storage space come gig venue right on the high street. And we have some, some uh, excellent bands and artists play little gigs in here. Uh, when we have our next gig being Fever Bridges, no, no, that's been gone. Our next, our next gig being Julian Baker on uh, on Saturday lunchtime, which uh, which will be quite quite special. like a defining part of like growing up in my youth it's quite sad to know that like my brother who's younger than me won't be able to have the same experiences if it closes the, the hippodrome uh, 20 years ago was a, a supermarket a high street retailer and then it, it, it changed into a, a nightclub and um, we made that nightclub into a space which could house gigs uh, over a number of years uh, and and it sort of works at the moment. It wasn't designed to be uh, a gig venue, but gigs happen there, and some of the best bands in the country play it. Like, with big production and bands like All J and Royal Blood and Frank Turner next week. You know, these are these are big touring artists. Um, but market forces being what they are, and property developers being what they are, they want to change it into a knock it down and start again. Um, they'll they'll get a lot bigger revenue from putting flats there. The council will get a lot more revenue from all the council tax and rates from putting new businesses and flats there. So you, you can see why in a time when we're still, there's still cuts all the time and austerity still exists, you can see why those entities would want to do that. Um, so that's where we're at. It, it's, a, it's a purely commercial decision, no one uh, from, from the landowner to make more money from the land. I mean, it's, it's, it's frustrating, but you can't you can't say that it's wrong. So where we are right now, we know that it's going to close, but we don't know when. It might it might be this year. I don't think it will. Uh, it might be next year, quite likely, but it could be 2022. Like we're, we nobody actually knows right now. But what we need to do is to make plans to have these events happen somewhere else. And basically, we need a big space which can park a tour bus, uh, let people in, let people drink. Uh, and have fire exits and be safe. And there's quite a lot of spaces in Kingston that that would actually work in. Uh, they need a lot of money to be spent on it and they need a lot of time and effort and vision. But I think uh, we have those in, in varying, varying amounts to make it happen uh, and, and I think we will.